Good morning, everybody. This is Sarah Little coming to you from the Claremont Club. Oh, I've got my waiver here. The fancy backwards waiver, so you can read it. All right, we're doing gentle yoga today to strengthen and lengthen your spine. And I am starting all by myself today. I feel very lonely. But Lance will be joining me in a bit. We have a couple of um, workers showing up. So, as you are in your space, hello, as you're in your space, find something that feels good to sit on. Anything that's handy, a towel, a blanket, a chair, probably not your couch, right? As much as I'd like to sit on the couch today and do nothing, I think we gotta not do that. And I'm gonna angle the, um, screen a little bit. I'm not loving this image here, so I'm going to angle the screen. Okay, so take a seat. Send the outside edges of your feet down. Press into the earth and let your hands come to your lap. Close your eyes. Take three breaths. Feel the texture of the world around you. So feel the fabric underneath your hands. Feel your clothing along your skin of your arms and down your legs. Feel the input of whatever you're sitting on, on your bottom, maybe on your naked feet. And just let yourself feel this space and this time. There's a really lovely passage in BKS Iyengar's book called um, Light on Life. And he talks about how every pore of our skin is an eye that we can open. And so letting each part of your body open to life, open to this moment. Feeling your hair follicles come alive, the skin on your face, the skin across your eyelids and the bridge of your nose, around behind your ears and down your neck across the front and back of your chest and upper back. No part of you too quiet to have a sensation in it. And then let's touch the hands. Lift the heart space and bow your head, honoring with this bow your body, honoring with this bow all of the people who you have practiced yoga with in the past and you hope to practice yoga with in the future. Honoring with this bow all of the generations to come who will read about this moment in time. and honoring all of the generations who have come before us, who offer us strength in dealing with hard things. Because this is not the only hard thing that has ever happened in the scope of human history. Release your hands, let your eyes flutter open, and let's move, hands on your knees. I start small circles. Like really small today. See how small you can get. Maybe you can move your navel around in a circle the size of a marble. And really focus in right around your belly button, moving the space just around the belly button, describing the 
the circumference of a marble. And then reverse direction, still sort of describing the circumference of a marble. And then you might notice that as you're moving, that other parts of you are saying, hey, I want some loving. So notice them, acknowledge them, say hey to them. And then I want you to make your circle bigger. Think about describing the size of a golf ball. A couple of times. Describe that golf ball. All of its pock marks. And then go the other way. I've been listening to bizarre podcasts. And one of the ones I was listening to recently was all about the science of the wiffle ball. Now let's go as big as a softball. And then go the other way. Just letting yourself feel these places within your body and noticing what all is coming online. What is waking up with these movements, with these turning of the belly movements. And now let's go bigger. Let's go the size of a soccer ball with your belly button. Make it your belly button that's describing the soccer ball. So let it really swell out in front of you and draw right and left and go back behind. Really allow movement, invite all of the movement you can. And then we'll go the other way. And maybe if you were with us yesterday, you have some interesting and new fun sensations in your hips that today you're saying, whoa, I didn't think it was that hard. Why am I feeling stuff? And maybe you aren't feeling new things. Let's extend the legs out and away. And notice as you do that, if that takes you back into a slouch, or as one of my teachers calls it, slump asana. So see if you can bend your knees a little bit and get your spine to come taller. And then we're gonna do a little rock side to side. We've done this a couple of times on the videos. So I'm thinking about how often I do this in class. I'm gonna move my sweater out of the way because we're gonna do something funny. So I want you to walk backwards with your bottom. So lean to the left, walk your left butt cheek back, lean to the right, walk your right butt cheek back. So travel as far as you can in the space that you've got. So I might get all the way to the front door, you never know, right? So this is a lot of what we're doing right now is we're traveling within the space that we have, but this might wake up some of the things we did yesterday with our hips. You might find some new spaces. If you hit the end of the space that you're working in, then go ahead and start coming forward. So you roll one side, and so we're really, we're walking on our ischial tuberosities here. And we have this power to shift around. That this is a lot, an illustration, not only does it feel good, but it's an illustration of how the legs are intimately connected to the spine. And you'll feel yourself go a little bit side to side and feeling those shiftings happen. So you're gonna come forward and then we'll go back back to where we were seated. And maybe you remember, here's Lance walking through, maybe you remember um, which leg you had crossed in front. My right, right leg was crossed in front. Maybe you don't. So go ahead and cross your legs. And if it feels like the normal way, then recross them. But if it feels like a new way, then you've done it correctly. Okay, hands on your knees. And we're gonna go around, here's Lance again in a circle. We're having an exciting life today. It's an exciting life every day at the little house. Going around in that circle and then go around the other way. And this time we're not thinking about describing anything with the navel. So notice how that shifts as well. Now, hands on your knees. Inhale forward, exhale round back. And as you round back, I want you to draw your belly button in and really reach towards your spine. So you can breathe here. You don't have to wait for the inhale and the exhale. But we're doing this really crunched up cat pose, right? And then let's draw all the way forward. So we're really thrusting the chest forward, moving, thinking about moving the actual vertebrae of the spine forward and through your body. And then round back. 
Inhale, come forward. Exhale, round back. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, round back. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, round back. And in your rounded space, I want you to shrug your shoulders or move your shoulders. One goes up, the other one goes down. So you're moving into sort of these intimate spaces in the upper back space. And then come all the way forward and move your shoulders here. So the two main actors, and it's not really rocket science here, the two main actors on the spine are the shoulder girdle and the pelvic girdle. So a lot of times when I'm with you guys and I ask the class, I say, okay guys, where do you need work? Uh, the response is either I need work in my hips or I need work in my shoulders. Sometimes then it, it radiates up towards the, the head and sometimes we get the backs of the legs. But oftentimes we're in the hips and the shoulder space. And they are major actors on the spine because we have this, um, I'm going to come up with a fancy word in a moment, but we have these movers that are out and away from us. So a lot of our need is to pull them back into ourselves to integrate the information from the cells at the distal ends, at the far ends of our body, into the center. So we're gonna be doing some of that work today. Go ahead and lie down on your back. Carefully, if you've been wandering around on rollerblades, trying to figure out the world on rollerblades. Okay. Arrange your clothing appropriately. And then here, let your arms come out at your sides. Take three breaths, feet are flat on the floor. Feel the back of your head in space. Draw your knees into your chest. Hug in, straight down. Reach your right leg away. Hug your left knee. Draw your right knee in. Send your left leg away. We're going to go side to side here. So we're going to kick out with the right. Draw the left knee in. Draw the right knee in. Kick out with the left. Just keep going side to side. Feeling the information in your body. Noticing as you're going, if you're building a little heat yet, if there's any line of tension that you weren't feeling before, just welcoming it in, right? That's one of those eyeballs of the skin, eyeballs of the muscle cells that are waking up, that are giving us information about what our body needs today. Both feet go to the floor. Drop the knees in towards each other. Let your arms go out wide in that T. If the T doesn't feel good and you don't have space, it's also okay to do the cactus arms. Let's go, um, yeah, I'm going to take the T because I've got space. Now, I'm going to work with just the right leg. I'm going to keep the left foot flat on the floor, and I'm going to think about making the posterior chain of the body active. So I'm going to lift the toes and drag the heel back towards my sit bone, and then reach that sit bone towards the heel. So the back of my left leg is in this constant loop of energy as I bring my right leg up towards the ceiling. You might bend your right knee. You might not have a, a straight leg access, okay? So I'm gonna show with bent right knee. Now, I'm gonna think about my right hip. Draw my right hip towards the far corner of the mat and move the rib cage down. So I'm getting this, not only do I have this loop of awareness in my left leg happening, but I'm also working for the loop of awareness through the front of the body. Arms out at the sides. I'm going to inhale and slowly lower the right leg down. Exhale, draw the right knee into the chest. Reach as you inhale. Exhale, pull back in. Inhale, reach. Exhale, lower. Inhale, reach. Exhale, lower. Inhale, reach. Exhale, lower and then kick your right leg up. You might keep the knee bent, push your outer hip away from you, and go into the loop. So we're gonna hold the loop in stillness here. Feel the left heel pressing down and drawing back towards your sit bone. So you're feeling the back of the leg. 
Then let's see how far we can extend the right leg towards the ceiling. So you really want to be feel now that back of the leg, the posterior chain, that it gives us so much tug on the pelvis. Go ahead and put the right foot on the floor. Pause. Undo stuff. So you can wiggle if you want, or just stay in space. Go back to that feeling of clothing on the body. The rhythm of your own heartbeat. The joy of being alive. Feet on the floor. Right foot presses down. You think about this connection from the heel up the back of the leg towards your sit bone. So you're going to press down and pull back. And then we're going to think about the front of the body turning on. So as I draw the pubic mound towards the navel, that that gives me a longer line across my pelvis. And then I'm going to think about low ribs going down. Left leg comes up. Maybe it's bent. Maybe it's not. Inhaling, lowering the left leg down. Exhaling, knee into chest. Inhale, down. Exhale, knee into chest. Inhale, down. Exhale, knee into chest. Inhale, down. Exhale, knee into chest. And we'll go one more time. Inhale, down. Exhale, knee into chest. And then kick up. Renew your connection to your right leg. And then think about that same connection. We were engaged in it on, the other, on this side already when we had the foot planted on the floor. So feel that connection from the ischial tuberosity, from the sit bone, to your calcaneus, to your heel. Push out through that space, expand the toes, drop the heads of the shoulders, and maybe you soften your neck by rolling your head side to side. So we can have this sense of security low in the body while we find freedom higher in the body. Settle the left leg down. Okay. So, continuing on, both knees in towards your chest, flare your toes, and we're going to work the, um, hmm, sorry, I'm thinking about too many things. We're going to work the navel point in towards the spine and drop those front ribs down. You can always choose to work one leg at a time. If it feels like too much to do both legs, then go to one leg at a time, all right? Here we go. Squeeze in between the thighs. Connect the inner uh, edges of the big toes. And then let's lower the heels down and draw back up. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, draw back up. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, draw back up. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, draw back up. If you're feeling like, hey, I could do this for days, then you can add a level by extending your knees. If you're thinking, no, I don't think so, Sarah, then go to one leg, all right? If you're already working one leg, then I want you to make sure that you shift which leg. We're gonna go five more cycles. You decide how you're gonna practice. I'm gonna extend my legs a little bit. I'm gonna reach the tailbone long. Inhale as we're going down. Exhale as we draw the legs up. Think about your low ribs dropping down. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. We got two more. And then bend your knees. Rock a little side to side and set your feet down on the floor. Elbows go down by your sides, roll the heads of the shoulders back, and now we're gonna look for the stretch across the front of the body. Inhale, lift up, exhale, lower down. And we'll go five rolling, so this will be two here, up and down. Inhale up, and exhale down, three. Inhale up, and exhale down, four. Inhale up, and exhale down. There's five. 
we're going to do the same activity we did at the end of class yesterday, where we took the feet as wide as the mat. And I want you to make sure that the outside edge of your foot and the whole outside edge of the foot, this is one of those ones where I see people um, messing around in class. Not really messing around, but I was watching Carrie Ann and Lance yesterday, and their heels were totally going in. So be better than them today. Move the whole outside edge of the foot parallel to the outside edge of the mat. Press your elbows down. Lift your hips up. Inhale. And we're going to think now. Track the tailbone through the knees. Push the calf muscles forward. Draw the knees back towards your hips. Reach that tailbone long. And then enjoy your breath. So you want to make sure you're not in a space where you're feeling compression in the low back. You want to make sure that you're in a space where you're feeling length along your side bodies and along the back of your spine. Broaden your knees. Exhale and lower down. Let the knees fall together and pause. Let your arms fl uh, fly out at your sides. Take a small break. Now we're going to bring the heels in line with the sit bones. So the sit bones, those are those ischial tuberosities. Find them. They're little bony spots. They're the base of the uh, ischial bones as they come towards the pubis bone and as they reach back up towards the iliac. Ilium. Okay. Fan your toes. Make sure those outside edges of your heels are moving out. Find that link from heel bone to sit bone. Lift up, maybe press your elbows down. Do roll one shoulder under and then the other. Push into your feet, reach your tail along, draw your knees back towards you. Let the knees fall together. You can kick your feet wide again. Pause. Notice where the eyes of your skin are opening more. So are you getting more sensation in a spot that's tired? Are you getting more sensation in a spot that we've just worked? Just be alive to the signals in, within yourself. Let's bring the feet together again. Just big toes brushing each other. Elbows go down towards the floor. Right shoulder under, left shoulder under. All these good things that we do for ourselves. Pull the heels back towards you to help draw the tailbone long. Inhale and come up. Then think. So oftentimes we roll to the outside edges of the feet. The knees go wide. We want to think about planting the inside edge, the edges of the feet down. Let, letting the inner groins drip. Take the tailbone longer and gather the inner thighs. Make sure you're not getting any uncomfortable sensation in your low back space. If you are, you can drop your bottom a little bit or you can take your feet a little wider. Release your bottom down. Pause. Take those feet wide, knees together, arms out. I have always been a bit of a sensation seeker, and I remember being a little kid and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning until I fell down on the floor. And I think that when we make these pauses, I want you to have that feeling of having been let's just spun out and falling down and feeling all of the sensations that come with that. Right knee into your chest, extend your left leg long. Left hand's gonna take the right knee, pull it across the body. Oh, we're just gonna go side to side. Draw the right knee up, pull it in, put your right foot on the floor, left knee in towards you, extend the right leg, Go over to the right with the left knee. We're going to go side to side. So that was round one. We'll go th four more times. Right knee in. Extend the left leg. Right arm reaches away. Left arm guides you over. Come back up. 
put the foot on the floor, left knee in, hug it in, then extend the right leg, go over to the right, up, hug the knee, left foot comes down, right foot goes down, right knee into chest, left leg long, pull across, let yourself take the time, right, take the time to feel the movements, to feel all the places in the body that say, oh, yeah, I can use this movement. You might discover that as we go, the next time you go to the left, that you're going a little bit further with the knee. You might discover that, hey, going further hurts, so I'm not going to do that. Check in. Be within your body, right? This is the challenge all of us are facing right now, is to be within our space, to be within our bodies, to keep emotionally satisfied in a changing world. And some days I'm super yay, yay at that, and some days not so much. Okay, right knee, final time. Lance is gonna find his mat. Go over to the left. Mm. Right knee in. Put the right foot on the floor. Left knee in. La, right leg long. Left knee over to the right. Bring it back up. Hug in. Put the left foot on the floor. Put the right foot on the floor. And then we'll do that little bottom wiggle again, okay, that we did yesterday. So press your feet into the earth, hover your hips just like an inch off of the floor, and start shimmying. And if you've got um, opulence, one of my teachers calls it opulence, then you might feel your opulence gym. Mm. Shake it all around and then resettle your bottom to the floor. Eyes closed, be like that little kid who's just spun and spun and spun and spun till they fell down. And you can feel the earth moving and weaving around you. All right, so we've talked to the legs and the hips a little bit. Now we're going to talk to the upper arms that are also part of our, um, part of that, the, good God, the words are just not going to happen. That's okay, I can't do. The other big effector for our spines, reach your arms up. And I want you to reach like you're climbing a rope. Climb that rope. Climb it. Maybe climbing without the desperation of knowing when the rope ends, right? <laughs> okay, drop your arms to the side. Feel like that kid who's just spun around and spun around. Reach the arms up. Hmm. Turn your palms so they're facing your feet. Bend your elbows. Put your elbows on the floor. Now we're gonna see how far we can reach with our fingernails. Can we reach the fingernails to the floor overhead without the elbows coming up? And then tip the fingertips towards the ceiling. Inhale, reach. Turn the palms to face each other. Open the palms towards your feet. Bend your elbows. Drop your fingertips to the floor. Come up, reach, turn your palms to face. Turn your palms towards your feet, bend your elbows, drop towards the floor. Come up, reach, turn your palms. We'll go one more time. Palms towards your feet, bend your elbows, drop the fingernails towards the floor. Come up, reach. Okay, palms facing each other. We're gonna do sort of this um, row body thing, okay? So we'll drop the right hand down, left arm up, and then come up, meet in the middle. Right hand down, left arm up. 
So we're touching thumb and pinky, thumb and opposite pinky, going side to side. And just be aware which sweep feels the most interesting to you, which one feels more challenged. Reach both arms overhead so your thumbs are reaching towards the floor. And notice if your belly is pulling up towards the sky. So let's think about placing the feet down, drawing this uh, ischial tuberosities, drawing the sit bones towards your right your heels, and taking the low ribs towards the floor. You may discover that your hands need to float up to make that happen. Then we're just going to reach, so let your shoulders go towards your ears and then draw back down. So you're just going maybe three or four inches and drawing back down. Three or four inches up and drawing back down. Three or four inches up and drawing back down. Keep those low ribs grounding as you're moving. Mm. Now reach towards the ceiling and give yourself a hug. Doesn't matter which uh, arm is on top and rock your upper back. So your legs might move as well, but mostly the focus is on the upper back. Open your arms towards the sky. Give yourself a hug. Other arm on top. Rock side to side. Upper back. Moving this space. All right. With this setup, draw circles with your elbows. And then go back the other way. Circles with your elbows. Notice which elbow is on top. Open out. Lift your head slightly. Draw your chin towards your chest. Resettle the back of your head towards the earth. We're going to do that a couple of times. Just remember which arm is on top. Inhale. Exhale. Chin towards chest. Smear your chin across your chest, keeping your shoulders down. Settle the head to the earth. One more. Inhale while you're down. Exhale, chin towards chest. Smooth the back of your neck towards the earth. Now, hug yourself the other way. And we'll do those circles. Circles with your elbows. And then go back the other way. Reach the arms up. Draw your knees in. Hug them in. Pull in nice and long. Let's rock a little side to side. And then we're going to roll to a side. And sit up to stand up. We'll roll to the side, press in, sit up, and then come all the way up to standing. Mm, I'm going to decide whether I get warm enough to take off the sweater today. Okay. Oh, surprise, surprise, step your feet wide. Okay. And uh, today we're looking at the spine. We're going to come into our half lift right now. So. Hinge at the hips, lean forward, hands to the floor under your shoulders. We're going to take cat-cow-like movements here. Bend your knees a little bit so you have some play space. Spread out through your feet. And then we're going to arch the spine like we did earlier seated. And then draw, uh, bend your knees a lot, lift your chest and your tail. Exhale, arch your spine. Inhale, head and tail up. Exhale, arch your spine. Inhale, head and tail up. Exhale, arch your spine. Inhale, head and tail up. And then see if you can come neutral in your spine. So lift the lower ribs, shrug the shoulders back, scoot your inner groins back. If you can, you might start to play with straightening your legs. But if you've got a little challenge going on in your hamstrings, keep your knees bent. Keep that softness there. Do use your toes. Reach your toes forward. Reach your heels back. 
from that, those inner groins reach down into your inner heels. Mm. And then let your head move a little bit. Move like a baby learning how to lift their head. Move like a turtle sticking its head out of a shell. It's a really slow, exploratory movement. Pause, draw your chin back, press down into your hands, inhale. Exhale, bend your elbows, letting your head dangle towards the floor. Inhale, come up, half lift. Exhale, dangle your head towards the floor, bending your elbows. So you may go really far, you may not go very far at all, that's okay. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down, one more, inhale up, exhale down, and then stay here if you can, if your body will permit, you stay here, otherwise you push into your hands and you get, bring yourself back into the half lift. We're going to experiment one more time with straightening the legs, so push the calves forward, Draw from your inner knee towards your inner groin. Scoot that space back. Lift from your kneecaps towards your hip points. And then imagine from your outer heels into your butt. Like putting on boots. We used that metaphor earlier. So the legs are becoming really sturdy in this space. Let yourself be supported by your legs. Maybe you let your neck and shoulders all sag towards the floor. One more breath. Walk in with the hands. Bend your knees, hands to your thighs. We've been up, down for a while, so give yourself time to let all the blood go back to where it came from, hopefully re-energized, okay? So, heel toe, heel toe, bring everything back together. <coughs> Stand in your Tadasana, so you have your feet hip distance, it's about two fists. Make sure the outside edges of your feet are parallel with the outside edges of the mat. Bend into the knees a bit, think about pushing the calf muscles forward so they're online with you. The quadriceps are lifting up and moving back. Tailbone is scooting down, low belly lifts. Ribs go back, heads of the shoulders go back. Free your neck. Let your arms just release towards the floor from the crown of your shoulder. And then explore where your head is in space. So let your chin jut forward like you're pointing with your chin and then draw it back. Let your head jut forward and draw back. When my parent, uh, mom was in Venezuela, she said that it was very, very rude to point with your fingers. So she said, when you were shopping in the store, she had to indicate things with her chin. So indicate the pom dulce you want to eat, right? And then draw back in and really integrate. Think about making the back of your throat so long. Tailbone reaches, crown of the head lifts. Maybe you ask for a little bit more length. Oh, oh, oh. From the tops of your thighs to the base of your ribs. Reach your arms up as well. Sweep them up. And notice if your ears came with you. See if you, uh, not your ears. I see if your shoulders came with you. See, uh, can you allow the shoulders to draw down? I notice that I disengage from my belly when I do that work. So see, I'm going to redraw my belly in, take the tail down, and then reach up again. Turn your palms out, release the arms down. Okay, side bend. We're going to go just with the, um, <coughs> the arms at first, and then we will add, uh, add some more weight overhead. Okay? So, Let's go to the left, reach as far down as your left leg as you can. Inhale on up, 
reach as far down in your right leg as you can. And just come side to side. You might notice that as you reach down, that your opposite shoulder starts to lean in. So if that is your tendency, be alive to it. Next time you go to the left, we're going to add the right arm, and then release the right arm back, add the left arm. And just going side to side, feeling all of these forces in our body, all of the places that were tight, that we recently worked, all of the places that are responding to our yoga practice, to our walking practices, to our gardening practices. We have an audience today of one, she's reading a book, maybe. Okay, and then let's check in with this space. Oh, we gotta go to the right one more time, sorry. Now we're even. Okay, <clears throat> take a little bit of space between your feet. More space between your feet. And let's sway heel and toe. Move your inner heels back as you settle them down. Then check in with the pelvis, right? Some of us have tremendous amounts of access in the pelvis, and some of us are feel like we're pretty much fixed. So notice for you, is this a really slidey space? If it is, you're gonna have to go into more muscular action, okay? If it's a very fixed place for you, you're gonna have to work the subtleties of the pose, okay? So for those of us who are wobbly, we're gonna find this fixed place. We're gonna draw the inner groins together, we're gonna think about inner groins back, tailbone down, and that's gonna lift and open this space right in front of the hips. Then the arms are gonna come up. Grab your right wrist, bend your elbows a little bit, and pull your elbows back. As you do that, as I do that, I should say, as I do that, I have this tendency to then thrust the chest forward. So I, I'm going to think a lot about those ribs moving back. See, now I'm in more in a line. I'm going to hold on to my right wrist and reach over to the left. Now we can play with those subtle shifts. Reach your right elbow forward and to the left, and then roll your right elbow back. Reach your right elbow forward and to the left. Roll your right elbow back. One more time. And reach back, come upright, release your hands, down. Just notice, that one sometimes feels very innervating. When we reach our arms up, the, um, it activates the pressor reflex in the heart, which means that artificially, I don't know why they say artificially, because the heart rate is elevated, but um, it would show, if we listen to your heart rate right now, we'd say, oh gosh, you just ran. We didn't actually run, we just reached our arms up, okay? Roll the shoulders back, settle into your feet, push your calf muscles forward, quadriceps up and back, inner groins go down, tailbone go, uh, sorry, inner groins go back, tailbone goes down, find that opening across the pelvis. We're gonna keep this space long, ribs back, reach your arms up, grab your left wrist this time, bend your elbows out to the side. Think about staying in this plane of action and pull your left wrist over to the right. Then we'll play. Reach your left elbow forward. Draw your left elbow back. Reach your left elbow forward. Draw your left elbow back. Reach your left elbow forward. Draw your left elbow back. Two more. Forward and back. Forward and back. And come up. Release your hands by your sides. Bring your feet underneath you. Appreciate the presser reflex. Bring the backs of your hands to touch. 
press them into each other. See if you can get the backs of your wrists to push in. See if you can get your thumbs to meet. And then notice if your shoulders are coming up or rolling forward. That often happens. So instead, let's think shoulders up and back. Nail point in, oh my gosh. And then let's bring the fingertips up towards the chin. And then see if you can drop your fingertips down towards your belly button without your shoulders going forward, yeah? It's a bit of a challenge. Come up towards your chin, keeping the shoulder blades rolling towards each other. Drop down towards your belly. And you might notice that your plane of action is really small. That's okay, there's no shame in that. Now, I want you to wing your elbows forward and back. When we come towards our bellies, this action is gonna happen for us. But I want you to just feel. We're gonna take one more forward fold. And we'll add a twist into it. We'll take another wide leg forward fold. But we're gonna be putting the hands down for a bit, so I want you to get into the wrists. Drop your fingertips down. Press, draw your elbows down. Again, notice that the shoulders are coming up. Drop those shoulders down. And maybe come just to the, um, Knuckles touching, and then roll to the wrist. So, knuckles touching, roll to the wrist. Knuckles touching, roll to the wrist. Knuckles touching, roll to the wrist. And then, sort of dangle thing. Yeah. Why not, huh? Our hands don't often go that way. Usually we're going the other way. Just roll around, roll around. So this is one of those attending to the quiet spaces in the body. We don't realize that we're putting stress into our wrists until, ha ha, the wrists say, you've put stress into me. All right. Step towards the narrow edge of your mat. If you, oh, wait, I told you we're going to take a wide leg forward fold. Let's do that. Step one. Check in with your hips. Notice if one hip is higher than the other. See if you can even that out. Move the inner groins back, reach the arms up. If your spine or the backs of your legs have been giving you trouble, bend your knees. Otherwise, think about keeping the legs long as you come forward. You might shift your hands towards your heart as you lower. Hands are gonna go on the floor. Let's take two of those cat-cow-like movements, and this time come up on your fingertips, so you're using your wrists in a different way. Hug your fingertips towards each other. Inhale, lift into that cow-like movement. And exhale into the cat-like movement. Inhale into the cow-like movement. Exhale into the cat-like movement. Inhale into the cow-like movement. Exhale into the cat-like movement. And then come to this neutral place. All right, again, if the backs of your legs are singing a song of sorrow and lament, then bend your knees, give yourself space. If the backs of your legs are just saying, oh, we're stretching, then that's all right. They're allowed to stretch. Just like children are allowed to do housework. All right, uh-huh, she says she is. Left hand to the floor, draw the left shoulder blade onto the back, put your right hand on your low back. Without moving your hips around, turn your chest to the right. You might extend the right arm towards the ceiling. And breathe. Imagine you're going to give somebody a high five with your right hand. We want to have that pressure forward and have, let that pressure forward help you draw your right shoulder blade down your back some more. Bring the right hand down. Place it where your left one is. Roll the shoulder blades onto the back. Take your left hand to your low back. Roll the shoulders again. Lengthen through the spine, start to turn to the left. If you are gonna reach your arm up, this is your moment to do so. Press your hand forward, like you're gonna give somebody a high five, so you can use that pressure to draw the shoulder blade onto the back. Release your hand down. And um, bend your knees, hands to your thighs, stand on up. Ha, feeling so good. Okay, 
Heel toe, heel toe. Or maybe you've got a hopping action. Step together. From the short edge of your mat, we're going to reach up. Inhale. We're going down fancy today. Exhale, bend the knees, hinge at the hips, hands to the floor. Spread those hands wide as soon as the hands go to the floor. Big, wide, starfish hands, okay? Knees go to the earth, tuck your toes under. Since we're here, why not throw another cat-cow in? Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Neutral. Toes are tucked. Shoulders are going back. Low ribs are lifting. Lift your knees off. Hover. If you have to set down, set down. Use your inner groins back. Lift your belly button up. Cross your tailbone one way, crown on the head the other. Settle your knees down. Bring your forearms to the floor. You could rest your head in your palms, or you could let your hips go back towards your heels. So when we do this work for the spine, we're really wanting to think about all of recruiting, all of the muscles around the spine to support it, to uplift our life force here, okay? Come up, hands and knees, spread those fingertips, see stars. Think about <coughs> moving weight into each of your fingertips. Drag the heads of your shoulders back. Lift your low ribs, tuck your toes under, hover your knees up. Push your inner thighs back, reach the crown of your head forward. This could be your practice space, thinking base of the index finger down, breathing. Or you might walk your legs back and come into a full plank. Think about recruiting all of the muscles from the arms and the legs, slurping them up to the middle of the spine, and then reaching out through the crown of the head, back through the tailbone. Settle the knees down, ha, elbows down, turn your palms up, maybe you press your hips towards your heels, maybe you rest your head towards the floor. Check in. Now, if your heart rate is going, it's not because of the pressure reflex, it's because you're working. Mm. We've got a third one to go. We're going to hold for six breaths, so I have an even number of breaths to play in. And I'm going to offer some leg variations. You can always stay holding in um, hands and knees. You can also always stay holding with the knees hovering. You can always stay holding in plank. All right? So, hands down. Come up, hands and knees. Spread those fingers out. Think about pulling them towards each other. So you're spreading them out and pulling <coughs> them in. So the muscles of the arms are going up. Draw the shoulder blades in. Lift the low ribs. Shoot that tailbone back. Hover your knees off. Stay right here or extend the legs. Stay right here or walk the feet in and float your right leg up. Right foot down, left foot might lift. Both feet down, knees down, oh boy, child's pose or puppy dog. Turn your palms up. Imagine all of that effort to stabilize is floating through your hands, ha, ah, out into the universe. Come forward, keep your elbows down, all right? Elbows down, interlace your fingers, right thumb over left, 
And think about making, so I'm going to come up, you're going to stay down. Think about making an equilateral triangle so that the space between your elbows is the same as the length of your forearms, okay? Oftentimes when we do supported work with the forearms, the elbows go wide. So you really want to think about containing that space. That's this drawback into the body, okay? So here we are, right thumb over left, roll the shoulders back, lift the low ribs, tuck your toes, lift your knees off, push back through your heels, press out through the crown of your head, really drag the shoulder blades up the back and lift those low ribs. Drop your knees, press back under your hands. You might feel, it might feel good to wave your bottom side to side. It might feel good to let yourself have a little cat-cow-like action here. Just acknowledge that we've done some work. We've added some um, tension into the shoulders. So see if you can release that space you might make shoulder circles you might shrug things around just let that energy play out okay palms come together left thumb over right interlace the fingers bring your elbows in slightly because chances are they've spilled out a little bit hug those in shoulders onto the back low ribs lift tuck your toes Lift your knees off, stay, or extend your legs back. See if you can bring your bottom and your shoulders to about a line. Draw the chin in, push out. Think about this, pulling into the middle to push out, long. puppy dog, or doing exploratory wiggles, right? But sometimes when we wiggle after a hold, we can find that little place that's catching. We can find that little place that's reluctant to integrate. The last one is going to last for six of my breaths. I know it's so frustrating. The teacher says six breaths and then she goes on for 20. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully you're not hyperventilating. Um, so six of my breaths, if you need to come down or modify at any point in time, choose to do that because that's what your body needs. Okay? Interlace. Go to the one that feels weird for you, right or left, thumb on top. Interlace. Roll the shoulders back. Lift the low ribs, push out through your inner grinds. Tuck the toes, hover the knees, or extend the legs, or add a right leg. Right foot down, left leg. Left foot down. Knees down, press back or crawl in. Either way, release your arms back behind you if you're in child's pose. If you're in puppy dog pose, you've got to keep the arms ahead of you. Otherwise, it's just I, in my body, I've got to keep the arms ahead of me. All right, my dears, downward facing dog. Spread out those hands. Think about the index finger through the thumb, really <coughs> landing down. Move the weight towards the finger pads. Shoulder blades onto the back. Maybe you walk your knees back a skosh. Tuck the toes. I found out from Miko that that's Japanese word, skosh. Tuck the toes. Take your feet wider. Okay? Knees are wider. Wiggle side to side. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. Wiggling is fun. Okay. Lift the belly. Move those inner grinds back. Take your knees up. Press your chest towards your thighs. Then maybe you extend your legs. Bend your knees. Glide forward. Settle your knees down. Press back. Child's pose. We're going to go in and up. Come up. 
Tuck your toes, lift your knees off, chest towards thighs, maybe legs straight, knees towards chest, forward, knees down, push back. One more. Come up, tuck your toes, lift your knees, chest towards thighs, straighten your legs, bend your knees, glide forward, press back. You may sustain any of these places for the next six breaths. You might sustain child's pose, you might sustain puppy dog pose, you might sustain knees hovering, you might sustain chest towards thighs, you might sustain the whole asana, the whole pose. Knees never have to come straight. Heels may never land on the earth. But do think about inner groins moving back, heads and the shoulders lifting, Pressing out through your finger pads. Come forward, knees down. And then we're going to walk all the way down onto our bellies. Ha, ah, stack your forearms, rest your forehead. Check in. What in your body is saying, um, excuse me, you've been doing yoga. back a bit. Just thinking about lengthening that front place right in front of the hip crease. Now tops of the feet are going to press down towards the floor and you're going to try to fan your toes down. We're going to bring the elbows underneath the shoulders and we'll begin sphinx pose. We're going to just play with cat cow energy in sphinx pose. So keep the tailbone tracking long, keep the shoulder blades moving back. We'll inhale and draw the chest forward, exhale and round. Inhale, draw the chest forward. Try not to let the bum flip, okay? Keep, keep the uh, tailbone going down. Inhale, lift the chest, exhale. Now, as you're in this exhale, see if you can lift your pelvis off of the floor. Inhale, down and go towards the back bend. Exhale, press the tops of your feet so much that you can lift your pelvis over the floor. Inhale. Exhale, lift. Inhale, down. And stay. Let your shoulders come towards your ears. Feel that. For me, that's not so comfy. And then let's press into the whole forearm, including the fingertips, and lift the chest. So we're just going to shrug this way. Let your shoulders come up towards your ears. Draw the shoulders down. Let your shoulders come up towards your ears. Draw the shoulders down. Let your shoulders come up towards your ears. Draw your shoulders down. And then think about that cat-cow-like movement, okay? We're going to take the heads and the shoulders back. Imagine the scapulas, the shoulder blades coming towards each other. And then we're going to push them, push them forward through the center of the chest. Draw your chin back and think of what your riddle is going to be. Nothing like a classical illusion during yoga. All right, look down, lower your chest, fan your elbows out, rest your forehead on your hands. And then let your head roll side to side. Mm. Okay, locust pose is coming up next. Locust pose is the hands free version of a back bend in yoga. Um, I'm going to come up with the Sanskrit for it. Shalabhasana. Okay, 
So we're going to start by extending the right leg back. Press the right foot down, extend the left leg back, press the left foot down. Bring your arms by your sides. And let's turn the palms down, thumbs out. So we're encouraging external rotation in the shoulders. In fact, rest your forehead and let your shoulders sag towards the floor. And then lift them up towards the sky. Let your shoulders sag towards the floor and lift them up towards the sky. One more time, sag towards the floor, lift up towards the sky. Shrug the shoulders back, reach back, reach back towards your knees. Take the tail back, press into your hands, lift your head up. Feel like you've done enough work to earn a fish, right? At this point, we all feel like seals. Lower down. Let yourself sag, feel the sag, and then feel the resistance to the sag. Fingertips, wrists, forearms, elbows, upper arms, heads of shoulders, tailbone's got a root. Lift your head and chest up. Exhale, release down. Let yourself sag. And then roll into it, lifting up. You might choose to take your right leg up as well and lower down. Sag. Unsag. Press the hands down, reach. Left leg might come up along with the head. Lower down. Sag. And then integrate. Feel this rolling action through the body. Both legs might go. Release down. One more back bend and then we're going to call it, okay? Hands are going to come by the sides of your chest. Elbows go up towards the ceiling. But as that happens, it, sometimes it drives the heads of the shoulders down like I'm doing right now. So I want you to think about heads of the shoulders up, whoop, elbows going back, like you're tucking your wing feathers, your flight feathers, back towards your tailbone, okay? Now we're all birds. It's amazing. Okay. Tuck those flight fingers back, feathers back, drawing the elbows towards each other to help you reach out through the front of the chest. Work the tailbone back. Inhale, lift your head and chest. Then float your hands for a breath. See if you can keep your hands floating. Lift your chest a little higher. Press your hands down. You might lift your chest a higher yet. Notice the shoulders want to visit the ears. Keep the shoulders out of the ears. Lift up your belly, oh gosh, and then lower down. Okay, hmm. I like child's pose. Some of you might like down dog. Some of you might be ready to roll over onto your back. So do the thing that you most want in this space. And in the next three breaths, we'll all come over onto our backs. I'm going to check in with the time. My body is telling me that we have probably done what we needed to do today, but I don't want to short any of us. So let's go ahead and roll over onto our backs. Yeah, it's noon. I have this internal clock. I've been teaching this an hour and 15 minutes for 10 years now. Has it been 10 years? Not quite 10. Eight years. Eight years next month, guys. Whoa, because Julia was three when I started teaching yoga. And Carrie Ann was in kindergarten, and she's in eighth grade now. <laughs> and Lance didn't have a single gray hair, right, at that point? He <laughs> didn't have any hair in the first place. OK. All right. Oh, let's do a little bit of loving for our hips before we descend into Shavasana. Mm. Let's just get into bonus arm squeeze. Okay. Right ankle over left thigh. Uh, push away. Mm. Breathe in and out of your nose. If movement feels good to you in this space, movement. A little side to side movement sometimes feels good. You might want to bring your knee in towards your chest. But listen, do that moment of opening all of the pores on the skin. 
and accept sensory information from every single one of your pores. Using our asana practice, our pose practice, to really wake us up to what's going on in the body, in the mind, and in the moment, right? It was so good today. Julie and I were on our run walk this morning, and we walked by a couple of friends, and at first we saw just the dog walking, and he had a big old cone on his head. And so Julie and I were feeling very sympathetic for the poor dog who was wearing a cone. And then I was thinking about when our dog had a cone, and how his cone always bruised the backs of my calves because he was such a bumbling idiot with the cone on his head and he'd whack it into my leg. And so I was imagining that that's what I was gonna ask the woman and as we got closer, they were two people we knew from our school. And so we talked to each other across the street from one another. It was really nice. Go ahead and switch legs. I noticed how much I miss the friendly moments. Friendly moments with friends and friendly moments with acquaintances and friendly moments with the people at the grocery store or um, people at drop off and pick up at school. So letting each of the moments that are happening, whether they feel like moments of relief or moments and waves of grief, to just allow yourself to have those things, to allow yourself to feel the lack, but also the space that, is that we're filling instead. Mm -hmm. Undo your left leg and take a twist. So you can just let your knees go over to one side or you can do the little crossover business where you cross one leg over the other and go to the side you crossed over. But let yourself have the sensations of twisting. Let that space be part of your practice. Make sure that you do the other side, whatever kind of twist you chose. And then release yourself to the floor. Ah, oh, sweet relief. So decide, you can stay with your feet flat on the floor, you can extend your legs long, do the thing that feels least irritating for your spine. Do you want a towel for your head now? He's, he's going to drift off into dreamland. Maybe, maybe not. I can't mute him like I can on Zoom if he starts snoring. Okay. <laughs> Everybody find this space of comfort. Let your body get heavy. See if your mind can stay present. poem today comes from Lucille Clifton, another one of my favorites. Praise song to my Aunt Blanche, who rolled from grass to driveway into the street one sunny Sunday morning. I was 10. I had never seen a human woman hurl her basketball of a body into the traffic of the world. Praise to the drivers who stopped in time. Praise to the faith with which she rose after some moments 
then slowly walked, sighing, back to her family. Praise to the arms, which understood little or nothing of what it meant, but welcomed her in without judgment, accepting it all like her children might, like children might, like God. Sorry, choked up on that one. I'll see if I can do it without tears. Lucille Clifton, praise song, to my Aunt Blanche, who rolled from grass to driveway into the street one Sunday morning. I was 10. I had never seen a human woman hurl her basketball of a body into the traffic of the world. Praise to the drivers who stopped in time. Praise to the faith with which she rose after some moments and then slowly walked, sighing, back to her family. Praise to the arms which understood little or nothing of what it meant but welcomed her in without judgment, accepting it all like children might, like God. Move your fingers and move your toes. Draw your knees into your chest. Roll a little side to side. And then roll to the side that calls to you today, pressing into your hands and lifting yourself for a seat. Touch the hands together in front of the center of your chest. Inhale. And exhale. Feel the base of your body. Feel the space between your hip points. Feel the space around your navel. Feel the space around your heart. Feel the space within your throat. Feel the space in the middle of your head. Feel the space at the crown of your head. Feel your whole body alive and welcoming. Bow your head. Thank your body for your practice. Thank your breath for its presence. The light within me celebrates that very same light in each and every one of you. Thank you so much for sharing this practice with me and with Lance and with our family and with our audience member, Julia. <laughs> Have a really great weekend and we will be back on Monday with more. Bye-bye. Uh, uh.